Chapter 31 Nightfall Passing through the darkened tunnel, Link and Prince Facade emerged somewhere in the western region of Death Mountain. Impa's secret road had greatly shortened the distance they had to travel, although it was still a good walk to the ancient front gates of the mountain fortress. So far, they had encountered no resistance along the way, which was nice, and probably because all of Ganondorf's minions were out searching for them. So, there they were, the two heroes standing in front of the enormous gates, and Link could not deny that he was feeling nervous. Well, we made it, Facade said, folding his arms as he looked ahead. Everything that we have done so far has led us to this point, and now we are sure to be tested, but what do we do now? I don't know, Link replied. Those gates seem pretty solid, but hey, we're supposed to distract him, right? So let's just make a bunch of noise until we get his attention. It was as good a plan as any, so that was exactly what they did, yelling and screaming while throwing stones at the gates, while also using many colorful names in order to call out the fortress's evil master. They yelled and yelled, throwing more rocks, whistling, and using even more colorful names, until Link was finally forced to address an issue that had been bothering him since he met the prince. No, no, Facade, stop, the young man said, putting his hand on his shoulder. It's Ganondorf. Listen to me, his name is Ganondorf. Ganondorf. You got it? Of course I do, the prince replied, apparently confused. Why? Is that not what I've been saying? Link just shook his head, but then they both froze, as the sudden sound of rusty hinges singled that the front gate of Spectacle Rock was opening. They watched intently as the enormous lock turned, and then there was a horrific metallic squeak as the gate opened just a little, enough so that a lone figure could emerge. This was it, the young man thought, as their rival stepped out of the shadows, but then the nervousness increased when they saw that it was not Ganondorf who had come out to meet them. Well, 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 Darknut the Overwhelming said as he approached. I would have never thought that weaklings such as yourselves could have escaped from the Wizrobes, and for a while I was tempted to ask you how you did it, but then again it doesn't matter, since I am about to cut you down like the defenseless children that you are. Are you so certain about that, Darknut? Facade asked as he drew his blade. You don't seem to have any Lynels around to protect you this time, and the way I remember it, I ran you through during our last fight. And now there are two of us, Link added as he readied the Master Sword. How does it feel to be outnumbered by superior opponents? Superior? You? The knight laughed, drawing his own sword. A crippled old beggar woman could have put up a better fight than you did last time. Believe me, I know from experience. And you, Facade, have yet to face me since Ganondorf made me stronger. So come to me, and face your deaths. So they did, the two heroes rushing forward to meet the knight's challenge, but this time working as a team. Together, Link and Facade attacked from both sides, alternating who would attack high while the other went low in an attempt to drive Darknut back. But their plan wasn't working. They had intended to overwhelm him until he either lost his balance or made a mistake, but neither of these happened. The knight just continued using his shield and sword to deflect attack after attack with no signs of fatigue. They switched sides, attacking high and low, covering each other with their shields, and attacking every time one of them saw an opening. However, their opponent was just too fast and strong, countering each of their efforts perfectly until suddenly swinging outward with his shield. The black metal was like a wall coming at them, and they blocked with their own shields, but there was so much force behind the blow that it was able to knock both of them off their feet. Whatever is the matter, children? The knight laughed as they hit the ground. Are you starting to realize how hopeless your situation is? If so, then I offer you this one chance to survive. Drop your weapons right now and run away with your tails between your legs. Run as far as you can and do not stop until you have left Hyrule never to return. This is your only chance. I have a counter-offer, Facade replied as he and Link got up. How about after I kill you, I turn your armor into a wood-burning stove to give to Zelda as a wedding present? 
The prince let out a war cry as he ran at Darknut, with Link following close behind, and the battle resumed. They both fought as hard as they could, but the knight was so powerful that again he was able to hold them off. However, this time instead of simply defending himself, their opponent counterattacked, kicking Link in the stomach the moment an opening was shown, and at the same time striking Facade in the mouth with the hilt of his sword. Link dropped to his hands and knees, gasping for breath, and the prince was knocked onto his back. Facade tried to get up, but the knight struck him with his shield, making him fall on his face. The prince rolled away and tried to get up again, but Darknut kicked him in the rear, giving him a mouthful of dirt and rocks the next time he fell down. Link was almost recovered by this point, but he could see that their current strategy wasn't working. The knight was such a frustrating opponent, and he was obviously a better swordsman than both of them. And this made Link angry. So angry that his arm began to shake, and that was when he got an idea. It was ignorant, probably his worst idea yet, but it was better than just sitting there while Facade got beaten to death. Not bothering to think his actions through, Link took out his boomerang and tossed it at their opponent, running after it as quickly as he could while putting all of his might into the sword. As expected, Darknut turned away from Facade and blocked the attack with his shield, and now it was time to put the legendary power of the Master Sword to the test. Jumping up into the air and spinning around, he swung his blade, and the knight blocked, but this time something unexpected happened. The blue blade tore into his shield, sliding through it as if it were made of parchment and cleaving the shield nearly in half as the startled knight stumbled backwards. Darknut cried out in surprise, dropping both halves of the now useless shield as he regained his balance, but Link was far from finished with him. He came at the knight with everything that he had, slashing at him with his blade again and again, but their opponent was not quite finished either. With both hands on his sword, he struck the young man's shield hard enough to stagger him, and then he made a wild slash that Link was forced to block, only to take advantage of the created opening by kicking the young man in the groin. Link made a kind of squeaking sound as he stumbled a bit before dropping to his knees, the pain leaving him unable to do anything about it when the knight backhanded him across the face with his free hand. The Master Sword fell from his hands as the young man ate the dirt, turning over just in time to see Darknuck raise up his sword for the kill, only to suddenly cry out in pain when Facade's silver sword was plunged into his back all the way to the hilt. The silver tip was sticking out through the knight's chest, and then he groaned and dropped his weapon, giving Link the opportunity he needed to end this battle once and for all. Ignoring the slowly fading pain as he picked up the Master Sword, the young man got to his feet and made one last attack a powerful sideways swing that sent the weapon right through their opponent's neck, and then Darknut's helmet was sent flying through the air, with his head still inside it. The knight's heavy body collapsed even before the helmet hit the ground, pulling itself off of the prince's sword as it fell, and leaving the two heroes just standing there for a few moments. We did it? Facade asked with genuine surprise in his voice. I mean, of course we did it! Monsters like Darknut might have had a chance when we were rivals, Link, but now that we've combined our strength, nothing in this world can stand against us. Facade, Link replied, breathing heavily. Right now, I am just happy to be alive. Well, I assume that it is pretty safe to say that we caused a distraction. So come on, let's go get your princess. Each taking a short moment to catch their breath, Link gave Darknut's body a solid kick in the groin as some kind of rather pointless payback before they once again turned toward the entrance to Spectacle Rock. The front gate had been left open from where the knight came out, so... Did that mean that there was no one there? Could they have really gotten so lucky that Ganondorf sent everyone he had out to search for them? And now they could just walk into the fortress unchallenged? Come, brother, Facade continued limping slightly as he started toward the open gate. The time has come to vanquish the evil Gargamel once and for all. Zelda and the Triforce of Power await. The young man started to correct him, but then decided that it was time to give up. If the prince really wanted to call their enemy by the wrong name, then that was completely up to him. So, with one more deep breath, Link followed him toward the entrance to Spectacle Rock, where the final battle of their very long quest awaited them. Thank <laughs> you.